welcome to St. Ambrose. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. The communion of the Holy Spirit, the communion that binds the Father and the Son, the communion that we celebrate here at the table of the Lord is the object of the commandment of love. To create a communion between humankind and God, between people with one another. There are plenty of things that keep us from forming communion or that want us divided Let's present ourselves before God humbly, acknowledging the difficulty that we sometimes have loving one another and loving God. Let's acknowledge our sins and ask pardon for them. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, I love you, Lord, my strength. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him, asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to, the, to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. It sometimes happens that the psalm uh, really provides uh, a key to the understanding of the uh, Old Testament and the Gospel. The refrain this morning that we sang, I love you, Lord, my strength, uh, begins to get at what we need if we are to fulfill those two greatest commandments, love God with all your heart and soul and mind, love your neighbor as you love yourself, those are simple enough to say and plenty difficult to uh, flesh out. I love you, Lord, you who give me strength, to carry out your command. Maybe a week before my father died, almost 30 years ago, I had a private moment with him in the intensive care unit. Unlike most of our conversations between us, the two of us, which didn't have much substance, this time, we tried to talk in a personal way. I don't remember what I said, but I remember that my dad revealed an appreciation of me that I had no idea he held. He said, you've always been so understanding. Really, I had no idea he noticed until what I imagined was for him a great effort to tell me that he loved me. I bring this up here because the scriptures today obviously are focused on love and love is not just a feeling. It often requires effort, sometimes heroic effort, to make love concrete. And love is not liking. We're challenged by God, who dares to call us his children, to love all his children without exception. I have heard recently from a couple of friends about their experience with loving difficult people. One of them, I will call her Amy, lives in an apartment where people neighbor back and forth some. And in the yard of the apartment, there's room for Amy to keep a small but very fruitful garden. Among Amy's, Amy's neighbor, neighbors is a woman who you could describe as standoffish at best. Not only is she not a friendly person, 
she has a little dog that waters and sometimes spot fertilizes Amy's garden. <laughs> Amy would rather spend an hour stirring her con compost heap than two minutes confronting this woman about the doggy. Just the same, Amy knows that Jesus calls her to make a difference for good in the world she inhabits. And so Amy decides to knock on the door of this neighbor and offer her some of the herbs she's been cultivating. Well, it's not exactly like a complete turnaround, but Amy gets a little insight into the serious health issues that may make the neighbor tense and turned in on herself. In the end, Amy's inclined to cut the neighbor some slack and the neighbor has someone praying for her as she heads for the Cleveland Clinic. That's example number one. The second example is my friend that I will call Terry. Terry uh, tells of a co-worker who is not only not a very good worker, but has a personality that nettles this friend of mine. The discomfort between them was so obvious that a colleague of theirs told Terry, do something about the attitude that was creating a difficult workplace. Well, Terry thought it through and hated the idea of being nice to this irritating coworker. But in the end, I love you, Lord, my strength. Jesus won out. And Terry was, described, was surprised to discover that a few kind words, a little interest shown to the irritating co-worker, produced in the one Terry found so grating, a gentler person to work with, and in Terry, a new patience for the things that had been so irritating. In the first letter of the Apostle John, we read, whoever does not love a brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love the God whom he has not seen. Whoever loves God must love his brother or sister. The example that God gives us is the example of one who reaches out to us in our need, not because we're terribly easy to get along with. The love of God has been poured out for us in the blood of the Savior poured out for us. The spirit of love whom God poured forth on the church at Pentecost was given to bring us, all of us, into a communion of love. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Light is needed to drive the darkness out. Fear and hatred cannot mend a world torn by fear and hatred. What is needed is the faith and love that in our best moments and with the grace of God, I love you, Lord, my strength. The faith and love that mark us as followers of Jesus. Our response to the commandment to love God with all our heart and soul and strength and our neighbor as ourselves will always create a certain internal tension for us because it will always be calling us beyond ourselves. But the tension is resolved at least for a while as we let the word of God guide our actions with others. Let us take a moment of silence to inquire within, who is there that God might be asking me to put more effort into loving. 
loving more, loving better, loving more truly. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's bring our prayers now before the Lord, along with these spoken in our name. For our church, may we always have grateful hearts for God's many gifts to us, for nature, in the changing seasons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world leaders, for those making voting choices, for all suffering from natural disasters and from the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our priests, deacons, and seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, those in pain, those with mental illness, and in thanksgiving for loving caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling with poverty, especially the homeless, those without adequate health care, and the unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may see the work of the Bishop's Annual Appeal as an opportunity to extend ourselves in love and service beyond the boundaries of our local parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a parish family, especially our volunteers, our sister parish, our beloved dead, and all in need of our prayers this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Steve Vosters, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Father, hear our prayer. Help us to know your loving will for us and to do it with courage and faith. We pray through Christ our Lord.
Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in the presence of our, in your presence, are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night. And gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed humankind in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants, and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice <clears throat> filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we recall Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, O Lord, Remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, and the, all the clergy. Those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a, a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with all your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. At the Savior's command and formed by Jesus' own divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's give one another some sign of peace. peace be. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. If you are receiving communion, please remain standing in your pew. If you are not receiving communion, please be seated. The priest will come to you. Please keep your nose and mouth covered except when consuming the host. At this time, please remember the sacred host should only be received in the hand. Thank you.
Thank you to all the parish families who have committed their support to the Bishop's annual appeal. To date, 133 families, equaling 33% of our parish families, have pledged $39,575 to help us reach, uh, reach 61% of our parish goal. Your support will be far-reaching, touching lives in our parish, diocese, and beyond in countless ways. Well done, good and faithful steward. Matthew 25, 23. You are living the gospel values and growing God's kingdom, just as Jesus Christ asked of us. There are still families who have not, we have not heard from. Please prayerfully consider joining our, your parish family in this important initiative and make your pledge this week. Let us continue our efforts to achieve our goal of $65,018. November is the month to remember our beloved dead. There will be a box in front of the altar in which you may place the list of the deceased members of your family. At each Mass during the month, they will be remembered in prayer. Next Sunday is the Feast of All Saints, and Monday will be All Souls Day. The Mass for remembering all our faithful department, departed will be on Monday evening, November 2nd, at 7 p.m. All are welcome. And next weekend, Daylight Savings Time ends. Please reset your clocks for Sunday. Fall back. God bless you all. Let's stand and pray. May your sacraments, O oh Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Amen.
Thank you. Oh, David, boy. Thank you.